Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm just going to sit and draw with you. It's going to be one of those draw with me type videos. Uh, I'll aim to have it a good length, you know, so you guys can work in your sketchbooks along with me and I'll try to talk at the same time too. Uh, we'll see how that works. I also have my computer over here and I'm going to be looking up references so I'm sure my arm will like cross over a bunch so apologies for that we are working with a very small um, filming space because I can't be bothered to tidy up more um, huh. but today I wanted to show you basically how I sketch faces from reference and how I think about them um, I had a friend uh, mention she wanted to get better at drawing faces and it's hard to explain without showing so this is gonna start off as sort of part demo and then I'll probably just like doodle a bit more after that to fill the time but what I did is I sketched one face here so this is uh, an actor who's on the show uh, The Last Kingdom on Netflix that I've been uh, watching through recently and uh, I really enjoy it so um, this is the character Uhtred and I just did this sketch from a promotional photograph um, for the show uh, and then with this overlay here I'm going to show you sort of like what I'm thinking when I'm drawing a face and sort of where I start and then I'll like draw a new one over here um, so you can see it basically from the start so I like to use reference even if I'm not trying to draw a portrait of a specific person. Um, you can use reference for uh, different facial um, poses, different expressions, different angles, different lighting schemes, uh, colors, um, whatever you're basically you know trying to impart in a certain piece or a drawing or what you're trying to learn from it. Um, so I start off basically with a, a, a knowledge of basic facial anatomy and skull anatomy and that's mainly where all of the landmarking comes from in, in the piece. So I have this pink pencil um, and I'll show you basically where I start. Like when I'm looking at the reference, which would be over on my computer or my phone or whatever, I'm not going to show you the reference, I'm just going to show you how I'm looking here because it's not how to draw the specific reference I'm using, it's how to apply these skills to the reference that you guys want to use so hopefully that makes sense um, but basically what I start out with always is basically just defining the width of, of the brow the width of the head here so I find that give, starting at the top um, and starting at the the width of the face gives you you can see there it gives you somewhere to start with and you know that you don't want your face much wider than this this is what fits on your paper um, stuff like that and then I go in and I sketch out roughly the hairline because that will give you basically the forehead and you can use this as a measuring tool for the rest of the face um, so getting the the distance between the like the the brow which is over here and the hairline um, sometimes is not quite right, so I don't always I don't block it in darkly. Um, I give myself a little wiggle room if I need to move the hair up or down uh, at the end. But since this is a very main part of the skull, right, that is something that you can anchor anchor onto, and it also will give you the um, orientation of the head. So like if the if the hairline's lower down, say if somebody's looking down, then you'll get that in this first pass and, and what have you. So moving on to sort of the main bone structures, I will also very loosely block out the brows, the eyebrows, because eyebrows are a very important part of the face and it's a great way to start um, deciding where the eyes go without having to draw the eyes yet. I, uh, some people get intimidated by the eyes, I guess, um, and even I do too, depending on the angle of the eyes. So the eyebrows are a little more neutral, uh, and it's a good, a good spot to start, I find, because that's, a, that's a, a literal ridge in the bone, and that will give you the literal gap where the nose comes in, right? So 
that's that's where I go and then I go to the cheekbones and get to the shape of the cheekbones because again this is a bone over here that shouldn't be moving no matter what your expression is um, it may get covered by fat or muscle or hair or what have you but the shape of the cheekbone is pretty much like if you have that and you have this right now depending on how long the face is you know you know how to go down to the bottom um, and they say usually like the eyes are in the center of the face, but that's including the hair, of course. So the hair and the uh, the top of the skull that you don't see because it's behind the hair. So this is what I usually start with is just this like eyeless set of cheekbones, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then from there, um, you can basically, so I, I do a lot of internal, internal, um, Mental geometry, I guess. I don't always sketch it out, but I'll sketch it out here for you. So basically you get, from the cheekbones, you get a line down to the chin. And you're not always gonna see this on the, on the actor. They might not be this chiseled, right? <laughs> um, but there's your cheekbones, and then the jawline comes out around them, like that. And the chin connects up underneath. Now, with this particular reference photo with Uhtred, he's got this, like, long, scraggly beard on the bottom. That's not part of, like, his chin. It extends beyond his chin, so you just have to imagine where the chin is beneath that. Um, and I always start with sort of a more geometric shape for hair than, than actual hair, so it'll look something like that. Like, oh, that's where it goes. Um, and then once you're once you're uh, you've got that here, you can start on the eyes, which I also think of as, and it depends, of course, the expression and what shape the eyes are. But always put a little bit more emphasis on the inner corner of the eye because that's where the um, the eyelids originate from, basically. Um, and you you get that sort of inner corner of the eye. Um, you want it to be a bit of a focal point. It's the same theory as putting on makeup. Um, you highlight the inner corner of the eye um, because it's sort of, it's near the center of the face and uh, it's just, it's a good anchor point for, for drawing the eyes as well. So you get the eye in. Don't do the pupil quite yet. Um, and then I always sketch in the iris as just a loose circle, and then if it's in the wrong spot, I can always redraw it over top. I don't often uh, erase. Um, I try not to, uh, especially with this paper that I'm using here. Um, it just doesn't erase very well anyway, so it's incentive not to. Um, so you've got your eyes, and then there's a few other like geometric shapes that go around. So like the hollows under the eyes, are sort of like this, um, and uh, this is a bit dramatic, of course, but that's basically the bottom of the orbit, which is, again, another bone. So you get your bones in there, um, and then the bridge of the nose is also a bone, but then the, the nose itself is cartilage, so it shifts depending on what the expression is, you know, your, your nose wrinkles up if you're snarling or um, if something smells bad or whatever. So we're getting there with, with this stuff. Um, you find also that sort of along this line usually, like somewhere in the vicinity of the curve of the jaw and uh, these lines that I've drawn from the cheekbones, your mouth will, will show up. Um, but usually what I do is I, I work down from the nose, which again, you have this sort of patch of skin coming down from the nose like this, um, which is also useful when you're rendering, um, just knowing where things fall in. This is also a, a, a sort of planar, P-L-A-N-A-R, planar head approach. Um, which again is more useful if you're rendering, if you're just doing a line drawing or something more illustrative, not as um, pertinent. But if you do this sort of patch of skin here, um, it helps inform the shape of the cheeks as well as the shape of the nose. And then when you get to rendering, it kind of, you know, it, it helps you out with the form of the face. Um, 
but then so for the shape of the nose this this is probably the part where it's purely the most looking at the reference like you just you have to look at the reference to see how an individual's nose works um, and once you've got that sort of blocked in uh, you can emphasize it a little bit like emphasize that it's coming out of the page um, by doing a little bit of detailing on the tip if you can see that there um, it just sort of makes it move move forward a little bit um, and then the mouth always is uh, I start by finding the shape of the that little space in your upper lip between your actual lip and your nose um, there's a word for it but I always forget what it is um, and uh, I think it's one of those ones with the uh, with anatomical terms that's like it could be this or it could be like the private one anyway so <laughs> there's that and then from that I'll, I'll draw basically where the mouth goes and depending on how big the mouth is on the on the person you're watching you're you're gonna sometimes it'll come down just from the nostrils but more likely it'll come down closer to the uh between the pupil and, and the nose. So like on Uhtred here, it's basically right in the middle. So do that in there. And uh, it's always okay to sort of emphasize the, the divot beneath the lower lip. So this sketch here obviously doesn't look very much like the character, but this is the thought process that it goes through to get to this, if that makes sense. So you're basically drawing all these lines between the places on the face and the main ones for me anyway in the way that I draw. I'm just going to grab a highlighter here. Are the brows up here, very important, the cheekbones, the jaw, the chin, and basically the bottom of the nose, like this little section in here. So if you can get the relationships between these spots about right, you'll get a decent likeness, usually. Um, they're not always going to be perfect, and I'm sure if I put up the picture that I drew this from right next to it, you'd be like, mm, I don't know, it doesn't really look like it. You can get to measuring, and you can even use calipers if you're being really precise, like if you're doing a portrait of somebody and it has to look like them, like you're being paid, it has to. If it doesn't look like it, you're going to be a failure. Calipers are great. Measuring stuff with rulers is great. Marking out with your with your pencil, landmarking with your pencil, and uh, you know, sighting it properly um, from a live model is great. Um, but this is this is what I do when I'm drawing from reference that I find on the internet, which is most mostly what I do now. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, just knowing, you know, where I'm landmarking and drawing these relationships from. Uh, I'm gonna search up another another bit of reference and uh, do another portrait on the other side and, and talk you through that. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna do another actor from the same show just to be cohesive and because I like the show, uh, obviously. So um, I'll draw uh, David Dawson who plays Alfred, King Alfred. I've been reading also like a lot of, well, I've been reading Bear by Marion Engel, but I've also been going back to some uh, history books that I've read before. Um, but I think it's about time to reread them because I'm on a bit of a history kick. But if anybody's looking for history books, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but the uh, Tom Holland is a really great um, historian and author. His books are really compelling and not very, like, they're not super academic. Like, they have their academic, um, you know, roots and, and groundings, but they're just, they're, they're really interesting and they're really fun to read. Like, I've, uh, there's this, Penguin, is it Penguin? Penguin Monarchs? Yeah, I think it's Penguin Monarchs series that's all like different kings of England. So it starts with uh, King Athelstan, the first king of England as England. Um, king Alfred that I'm going to draw here is actually his grandfather. 
Um, but yeah, it's all by different different authors, but the, the one about Athelstan is by Tom Holland, and it's really, really good. And then I've been reading a few others that are like much more academic, a little more um, focused on the politics um, and the economics than they are on characterizations of of the, the monarchs and, and what have you, or like of the battles, whereas I find that Tom Holland gets a really nice balance between the two. Like you still understand the underlying politics and uh, the, the motives and everything, but you also, you also get a bit of a, a descriptive flair with it, which I don't know, he's really great. And I like his Twitter too, so. And he's not the same Tom Holland that plays Spider-Man, although some people tweeted him a lot about that. And he just started saying thank you to, to them. <laughs> They're like, you did a great job. And he's like, oh, thank you. Um, so I'm starting, of course, here, the same as this one. Um, and this paper is, uh, it's actually like printing paper. It's scraps. Um, and like printing as in like big photo inkjet printers. So it's not the best for drawing, but I, it's it's reused, right? It's like, it's keeping this from ending up just in the recycling again. So um, I'm starting off with the brow here. Um, and since in my reference picture, uh, it's a little bit of a three quarters, um, I'm gonna start with the furthest side away from me, if that makes sense. It's the edge, edge of the face, um, whereas the other bit of the face sort of disappears into the ear and the hair and recedes that way. So this is a side without the ear on a three-quarter pose. Um, so getting the shape of the forehead and the hairline, and I've got the brows blocked in already so that I can follow the shape of the hair from brow to brow, because he's got sort of this swoop of, of hair over one side of his forehead. So there's the basic shape uh, that I'm starting with. And then the cheekbone on this actor is a little less, um, it's less high up than, than on uh, Uhtred on the other side. So it's more of a gentle, it's a gentler curve down that way. Uh, ba -ba. And he also has a beard, but it's a little more trimmed. So just trying to figure out, of course, so here's here's sort of the cheek where it starts to meet the beard. And then following that up, this is the nasolabial line, um, the laugh lines, uh, basically, which are not very pronounced on the actor in this particular picture, but they're still there as the muscle underneath everything else that you're drawing. Following the nasolabial line up, it gets you to the nose, at which point I'm gonna block in the nose very lightly. And that's not gonna be perfect quite yet, but I'm gonna leave that for later. So following the shape of that, and then you get right between the eyes, the bridge of the nose, which has a little bit of a an aquiline quality, just a little bit. Um, and then shaping in the eyes. Anyway, that'll, that'll do for now. Again, it's very light and I'm gonna have to move, I think that brow up a little bit later, but. So, maybe I'll zoom you in. How about that? That's working, okay. Sorry for keeping you so, so zoomed out and I hope you don't mind my silver fingernails that are already coming off because I've been making things and cooking and cleaning and what have you. So moving on from there, so we've got that cheek in. I'm gonna start near the eye because of course there's the bone underneath still. 
and just very lightly put in where that cheekbone is going to be under the skin and I probably won't emphasize that anymore um, than that. And I'm going to also block in the shape of the hair. And then find the bit beneath the nose between the lips there. Follow the shape. So that'll do, and the mustache, of course, goes over there. And shaping out the, the shape of the facial hair beneath the lip. Usually there's a little gap here and here um, where the hair just doesn't grow. Usually some people get like a beard all across, like everywhere, like everything filled in, but facial hair grows differently on different people. So just be mindful of where you're placing it when you're drawing them. Because if you make someone like too beardy or not beardy enough, it can ruin whatever likeness you're going for. But that's also a good way to be able to disguise a reference photo. So say you're drawing, um, you're drawing somebody and you're using Brad Pitt as your reference. And your reference of Brad Pitt doesn't have a beard on him. And you want it to look less like Brad Pitt because you just want it to be like some um, warrior dude or whatever. You can give him a beard and then it'll look less like Brad Pitt. You give him a beard that Brad Pitt would never have. <laughs> right? So you can do stuff like that. I don't know. You can give him like the worst mustache ever and then you'd be like, mm, kind of looks like Brad Pitt, but I know it's not Brad Pitt because he would not. <laughs> Anyway, so now that I've got all those bits in there, I'm going to shape out the rest of the face following basically where the where his beard goes. And that chin might be a bit too strong for him, so we will tone it back just a bit. Hair, hair, and then you've got a little bit of an ear peeking through the hair over here, but most of it's most of it's hair. Okay, so that's like, that's most of it, and it's not, it's not perfect, so I'm going to just erase that side where I kind of got a little overzealous, and uh, sort of shape it out. And of course, at this stage, it's not going to look that great, because he doesn't have darks, he doesn't have like pupils. <laughs> He doesn't have shadows or whatever. So um, I'm gonna switch to a different pencil now. Uh, this is a black wing pencil, which will give me more value control. Of course it just broke, classic. So it's not fully sharp. I don't need it to be fully sharp. I'm gonna be basically putting in the dark, the dark areas where I want the drawing to 
have some shadows. And again, this paper just, it isn't the best. I don't know if you guys can tell it all, but I can like feel it, you know? You know how you can feel it? Um, and at this point, you know, I'm not thinking like this is hair. I'm thinking this is a shape that I'm trying to define. And so I think about it more as like, you'd think about drawing a sphere or like, A cube or whatever just putting putting the darks where you need them
Anyway, so there you go. Kind of looks like him. Kind of doesn't look like him. Uh, doesn't really matter because it's a sketchbook where you're supposed to, to, to practice. And uh, it's always a little bit more difficult to draw it while you're explaining it at the same time, I guess. Um, so, you know, I could keep working on this. I'll probably keep, I'll keep at it for a, a little bit here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically like sort of where I start off, um, and, uh, what I think about. But the main, the main thing is that the, you know, at least the way that it makes sense to me is, is to use the cheekbones as the anchor. Some people will say, like, I don't know, some people will start with the whole shape of, of the face, and, uh, it's always, like, you can do it that way, um, I just, I often don't, um, it's partially because I've had, I've had practice, but by doing the shape of the face around, like, the forehead, and then the cheekbone, and then the jaw, like, you're basically doing around, but, like, a lot of people will start with, like, an egg, um, but when I'm drawing from reference, like, it's hard for me to see them as an egg. Um, I see the face as the different planes of the face and the skull underneath. So that's where this is coming from anyway. Um, and even when I draw things from, from just my brain, you know, I start in, in, in similar, similar ways. So I'll start with the, the brows and the forehead, right? Um, and then cheekbones, chin, jaw, a nose, right? Like I've, I've stopped doing this sort of like egg, egg method. Um, it's, it's probably useful, you know, if you're really just starting out, but I find also that it it covers your drawing with a lot of lines that you don't need, um, especially like, I mean, okay, an egg's not that bad, but especially when you start doing the circle thing with the, with the shield on front, like, that's useful if you're drafting, I guess, right? Um, but if you just want to draw a face, you know, you're getting this line in the center, Th this line doesn't mean anything, you know, that's not going to show up on the on the final drawing. So I think this is coming from a place of me having done enough drawing with pen and ink, um, you know, where I've started to move past that um, and try to get the form correct in the first place without having to build it out like this. Like sometimes when I'm doing more complicated poses, I still do this, obviously. Um, uh, but the you know, I'm still just searching for the bones, right? The jaw, the cheekbone, the chin, and the brow bone. Um, anyway, so I, I hope that's useful or at least interesting if it isn't useful to you. <laughs> you know, this may not be the way for everybody, of course, but it's the way that I do it and maybe you'll be able to find something useful in that I guess um, yeah anyway um, that's how that's how I do it, especially drawing faces, you know, from from reference and such. Just looking for the bones. Just look for them. And of course, um, I'll, I'll draw you a really quick, like, crappy skull here, too. Because um, you get the brow bone here and the sockets there. You get the top of the nose, which is here. And then the rest down there is, is cartilage, right? But you get this really awesome, it's called the zygomatic arch. You get this really awesome bone right here that goes 
it goes up and then it, it sort of leads into the rest of the skull. You have this nice hollow behind the eyes, right? And the zygomatic arch is basically where the jaw connects. And of course your palate goes back behind the zygomatic arch over here. And there's a, right here there's a nerve, a nerve opening, um, foramen. There's a foramen for your nerves, so if you press right there it feels weird. It's because your nerves are coming out of it. Um, and you got two on the side of your chin as well. Jaw goes back, jaw goes here. And then the rest of the skull goes back there and there's a, your brain stem and whatever with your... So the bits on the skull, of course this is a funny, it's a funny looking skull but it, it, it shows off what I'm looking for which is the brow, the cheekbones, the jaw bones and the chin and the top of the nose. Because those are the high points of your face. That's also where you're going to want to highlight your image. You know, you put your lighting on there. And then everything else uh, is sort of fleshier. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it was useful. Let me know if it's useful or not. Um, let me know how you like this style of video. It's sort of a more informal tutorial, I guess, but that's, I think that's how I would prefer to do them. These sort of uh, uh, more labor intensive tutorials, I don't know, they just aren't, they don't come naturally to me. I don't like the editing process. Um, some people love it and some people do really good Skillshare classes and whatever, but I'd rather just like blab about some stuff and, and hope you liked it. <laughs> a little more casual, I guess, in my YouTube approach, but uh, yeah, there you have it. There's some dudes, a skull. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!